Hi, and welcome to this beginner's guide to saturation. Love, don't move the mountain. And let's start with the old tape saturation style in satin. Me straight to climb. If I bypass the saturation, you can tell this was recorded with modern equipment. This version is certainly more high fidelity, with a sparklier top end. But does it have the same emotional impact as the saturated version? The drive level is critical in this case. Too high gives us obvious distortion, a nasty sounding intermodulation between guitar and voice. But if I set it just right, we get a hint of audible distortion on the loudest notes of the vocal. And we can recreate the sound of vintage recording equipment struggling to cope with the dynamic range of a really powerful voice. Does this sound good to me because the distortion on those loud notes helps to make them more powerful and emotive? Or is it a cultural thing because I associate this type of sound with the musical style? Either way, I like it and I feel it helps to give the recording a timeless quality. It has another side effect, however, which we can see quite easily if we compare the clean waveform to the saturated version. These files are level matched with the same integrated loudness. But the clean version has visibly spikier transients, which have been shaved down and tamed in the saturated version. While the clean mix might need a little limiting to get to my target loudness, the saturated mix has bags of headroom and probably won't need limiting at all. For a more dramatic example, let's take a look at the drums from the Beginner's Guide to Distortion video. The clean drum track has pronounced transients, which have been smashed off completely by the multiband distortion. More subtle saturation, like the tape or tube styles, will round off the transients more gently, replacing a little of the dynamic punch with extra harmonics that can make them sound brighter or fatter and the resulting waveform will be a little bit less spiky and a little bit less challenging for downstream dynamics processes such as compressors or limiters. Okay, let's break out the test tones again. Here's a sine wave playing a G at approximately 100 hertz. And I'll distort it with the heavy saturation style as I did in the beginner's guide to distortion video. Chopping off the tops and bottoms of the sine wave so it starts to resemble a square and creating a series of harmonics. Here's the fundamental at just below 100 Hz, which we call the first harmonic. The first of the extra added partials is just below 300 Hz, exactly three times the frequency of the first harmonic. The next is at almost 500 Hz, exactly five times the frequency of the fundamental, then seven times the frequency and nine, and so on through all the odd numbers. Okay, now let's try the old tape style I used earlier. This is softer and warmer sounding than the heavy saturation style, and the behaviour is more complex, as we can see from the changing patterns of harmonics as I drive it harder. But notice that the harmonic series is the same. The first added partial is actually the third harmonic, the next is the fifth, and so on for just the odd numbered harmonics. OK, now let's try the warm tape style. The higher harmonics drop in level, so it does indeed sound warmer, even at high drive settings. But we still have only odd harmonics as before. With lower drive settings, however, we can add just the third harmonic, which can be delightfully subtle. Let's try this on a real mix, one where audible, obvious distortion would definitely not be appropriate. So I'm going to avoid the upper reaches of the drive knob. 
but with this set well below the level where the distortion becomes obvious, or even all the way down, it still makes the sound subtly thicker and warmer, as you can hopefully hear if I toggle bypass. Now let's switch to the clean tube style. So I can see my woman when she comes this does indeed sound very clean and clear. Turning the drive up a bit makes it, if anything, sound cleaner. The processed version seems brighter, clearer, more detailed. Well, if I crank the drive, the illusion is shattered, and we start to hear nasty sounding intermodulation again. But when added subtly, the extra harmonics from very gentle distortions such as this can counterintuitively make things sound more hi fi, not less. So let's try the warm tube style. And now we have a rounder, fatter bass, instead of glossy treble. These differences are deliberately subtle but they can stack up. If I run the warm tube style, followed by the clean tube style in series, I can add both types of colour. Okay, let's break out the test tones again. Here's a sine wave running through the warm tape setting we used earlier, with just a single extra third harmonic being added. Now I'll switch to the warm tube style. Notice the third harmonic drops in level, but we now have the second harmonic as well, at double the fundamental frequency. If I toggle between the two settings, they sound quite different, even with just a simple sine wave input. The tape style has a hint of the hollow character of a square wave, which becomes more pronounced if I turn up the drive. While the tube style sounds sweeter and warmer, and somehow less distorted, even though that second harmonic is actually higher in level than the third harmonic added by the tape style. The key difference between these is symmetry. If the positive and negative halves of the wave are distorted in exactly the same way, only odd harmonics will be added. But if the top and bottom halves of the distortion are different, we get both odd and even harmonics, with the level of the even harmonics depending on how much asymmetry is introduced. If I switch to clean tube, the even harmonics are still there, but lower in level than the odd harmonics indicating less asymmetry than the warm tube style, which has very prominent even harmonics. But you may have noticed an issue in the low frequencies. The warm tube style seems to be adding a large amount of sub-bass content. By the look of it, we'll need a fairly steep low-cut filter at around 20 hertz to fix this. But not all is as it seems, which I can demonstrate by reducing the analyzer resolution. 
Now that sub-bass content looks even more alarming, extending right up to 50 Hz. In fact, this is because asymmetric distortion produces asymmetric waveforms, with the positive cycles louder or quieter than the negative. And this looks like DC offset. If the analyzer had infinite resolution and went a bit lower, this would look like a narrow spike at zero hertz. This alarming looking lump at the bottom of the spectrum is just because this type of analyzer isn't good at showing zero hertz content. For proof, I'm gonna add a low cut filter, set it to the gentlest possible 6 dB slope, and tune it as low as it'll go at 10 hertz. And this totally and completely removes that low frequency bump. Okay, so let's look at what happens when you stack up non-linearities in series. I'll start with a warm tube setting, then run that into a clean tube as I did with the Little Robots song earlier. And actually the result doesn't look that different from just distorting it harder with a single stage. But a single sine wave doesn't give us the whole picture. Real world signals are invariably more complex than this. So let's add just one more sine wave higher up. And add the warm tube stage. And just like the harder distortion types we looked at last time, the result is intermodulation, with some and different partials appearing, as well as the harmonics of each wave. When I add another saturation stage, those sum and difference partials gain their own harmonics and intermodulate one another again, and the complexity grows exponentially. Here's a trombone part, which I'm warming up with the warm tube style. You can generally push the drive harder with individual parts than with full mixes. But I'm still staying well below the level at which distortion becomes obvious. This makes it look like I've got a sub-bass problem, but as we now know, it isn't really a problem. And anyway, it'll disappear with any high-pass filter. In fact, I've got an instance of Saturn on every individual mic on the horn section, plus another on the horn subgroup, and yet another on the master bus. In a traditional analog recording setup, each signal will typically pass through multiple non-linearities, such as transformers, tubes, or tape, and each will add their own subtle color to the sound. But digital recording has made these artifacts optional, which means if you want that analog style sound, you need to add these non-linearities deliberately. Listen to the difference when I bypass all 13 instances together. The saturated version seems simultaneously brighter and warmer. The saturation does a little of my EQing work for me, helping to add sparkle and reduce congestion in the low mid-range. And the instances on the subgroup and the master help to glue the horns and full mix respectively. So there's kind of a bell curve when it comes to saturation. Adding a little bit makes almost anything sound better. A bit more might sound better still. But there'll come a point where you're adding too much and the perceived quality starts to degrade again. Of course, with digital recording, you can just dial it back again in that case. And it's much easier to end up with just the right amount in your mix. That's all for now. Thanks for watching. <laughs>